Hello guys and girls, um, this will be a video about um, setting up an NVIDIA Shield. Um, now if you're like me and um, you really um, wanted like a, a decent um, HT PC solution and um, you've been for the past couple of years uh, messing around with uh, Raspberry Pis and what have you, um, I would really recommend um, getting an NVIDIA Shield. Um, reason simply because um, I had a list of things I wanted to do um, with an HTPC. First of all, um, it needed to be able to, um, of course, um, play video files, proper video files. Um, and um, the second thing I wanted to do is I wanted to have like a retro-ish gaming system um, to play like emulators and stuff, stuff, stuff like that, you know, just simple games. Um, I'm, I'm past thirties. So, uh, yeah, um, I grew up in the age where, uh, all the, um, retro consoles were still a big deal. So, um, I grew up with all those old games and I still like playing those old game, old games. So yeah, I wanted something that could still play the old games. Um, and third of all, um, I wanted a system that could um, stream in-home Steam, in-home streaming, or NVIDIA game stream um, from my main PC to um, my TV. And um, I've been doing that for years. Um, I started doing it out, uh, doing it um, by means of just hooking up my PC with an HDMI cable to the TV. Um, I've actually done it pre-HDMI um, back in the day, uh, I think it's like geforce gtx4 something like that 400 series um i think even sooner than that i think it was a uh, the geforce 4 card that had like the analog um video out on it um and you just you used to have like s video um uh, sort of plugs and stuff like that and so i've been doing it for a long long time um hooking up my pc to my to my uh tv and then um just sitting on the couch and with a controller playing my games, you know, because I like doing that. I really um, like um, being able to sort of do that. And I like the horsepower of a PC. Um, and back in the day, a PC, the gap between PC power and console power was quite significant. I mean, PCs were just much um, better at handling all the... Um, the 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 yeah the heart handling the games more um bleh, words um handling the games on the pc was just way better than on a console um the console graphics were just tuned down and it was yeah pcs was miles ahead now i don't want to preach like pc master race or anything i've owned consoles um so i've played them as well and um i, I like the idea of consoles but a console once again is it's a niche it can only do games and you can't use it as a media center um you can to some extent i mean most consoles they, they used to play like dvds and now they play blu-rays and what have you um but it's not an all-in solution um so i wanted a box that could do everything um that could play games that could play hardware demanding games well that is sort of like mm, um, in in the middle because you know my actual gaming pc is doing all the hard work but in the cupboard that my tv is in what would you call it the my tv cupboard i don't know english second language anyway um but i don't want to have a plethora of all kinds of devices stacked on top of each other um really cluttering up the place, giving me tons of cables everywhere. I want to have my PC and I want to have a box underneath it that does everything. Um, so I really jumped on the bandwagon train with Raspberry Pi because um, I thought um, at first that that would be able to sort of um, fill my needs. Um, it can do videos. Um, it could uh, do some retro gaming. Um, but the part where it started lacking was actually translating, um, and decoding a video stream for in-home game streaming. 
Um, Raspberry Pi is just not powerful enough. And the whole reason because it's not power, the whole reason it's not powerful enough is because um, it's GPU, the GPU part on the chip cannot decode video um, codecs that great. Um, lots of it's not supported. Um, if you, for instance, on a Raspberry Pi want to watch a video that is in an H.265 compression, um, it will just, it won't be able to keep up. It starts stuttering. And um, I've heard people that have problems with a MKV files and it's just not capable of decoding all that. So what I really wanted was a box that could actually decode anything. Um, whatever you spit at it, really. And then Shield came to market. Now, I live in the Netherlands, so it's been quite a while for the Shield to come here. Um, Shield's been out for, I think, over half a year now. But um, it's only just been released in the Netherlands. Um, I didn't really want to um, get one from Amazon or something like that. Um, because um, I know there's a difference in uh, currents and electricity and everything in America and over here in Europe. And there's differences in plugs. And I didn't want to work with like a converter from American to European or from English to European. I don't want that. I want to have a neat solution. I want to have a power plug that actually fits in my power socket. So, um, Luckily, NVIDIA, in my box, I've got all three. Uh, I've got the American thingy, and I've got the UK thingy, and I've got the standard European one, so I can now plug it in anywhere, and the thing's hot swappable, or not hot swappable, but it's swappable, so you can actually um, change it um, to which country you're in, which is a great idea, but, uh, yeah, I didn't want, like, a converter plug in between, so um, I wanted a full-on solution for all my needs. I wanted a... Uh, streaming device uh, which can in home stream games for me I wanted a uh, media center and I wanted kind of like a better smart TV as well you know um, YouTube stuff and what have you and I wanted it to be good so I went out and I finally bought a shield um, and I've got it all set up and there's a couple of ticks and uh, trip uh, tips and tricks Ooh tips and tricks that I would like to share with you um, to get the most out of your shield because if you're like me you opened your shield and you plugged it in and you thought okay the standard stuff that's on here is pretty good but I want to add some of my own things now how do I do that so this video is going to be about me showing you guys how I've set up my shield to look nice um, doing mostly stock but look nice in the retro gaming aspect, um, perform well on game streams, which is, the game stream is pretty much just like set it up and it's, it's really easy. I mean, you just hook it up to your computer and it just does that. You can tweak the, the, the what do you call it? Screen size. Um, resolution, that's what I'm looking for. You can change the resolution. You can change the frames per second and stuff like that. So, and um, how to set up like basic Kodi. Um, so yeah, without much further ado, um, we'll start swapping towards the um, Shield interface and um, I'll show you guys how I've got it set up. And then after that, I'll show you how to actually set it up. So yeah, um, see you in a bit. Right, so here we are um, on the Shield. Um, this is uh, being recorded with the Shadow Play on the Shield. Um, so I'm hopeful this is a, a good video. Anyways, um, yeah, you start up your shield and uh, you basically get greeted with this um, this uh, screen right here. So, um, yeah, uh, one of the first things that I did um, was I installed uh, ES File Explorer. Um, it's really uh, handy to uh, get this thing and um, I'll show you a, a bit why later. So first of all, um, what I wanted to do was I wanted something uh, to, that could play my video files and be like a media center. So I installed uh, ESP, e, uh, SPMC. So this is uh, SPMC and um, 
yeah, it's a Cody fork uh, done by a guy, and but it's more focused on Android. So um, yeah, you can pretty much just download this from the uh, from the App Store. Uh, just search for SPMC and um, you'll find it. And if not, there's ways on like Googleians who can tell you how to do it. But so I installed this. Um, I wanted something that could uh, play my video files uh, and um, pretty much work like a like a media center. So one of the first things I did, um, because if you're like me, um, I use this thing in the bedroom for now um, and I got to say that if I've been watching like a movie or a, a series or something like that, a couple of episodes from something or what have you, um, I really wanted it to auto sleep and it was not doing that for me. So one of the first things you need to do is um, you want to go into here. Now, I know this is all in Dutch, but um, the things are all the same. You want to go to expert, uh, make sure that you all have... Um, all the, you have all the things to what do you call it um uh, all the settings to change and you want to go into um uh screen protection or what's it called screen saver and you want to set the screen saver mode to system now it will be on dim it will be automatically on dim so but you want to have it on system Reason for that is now, if you leave it for uh, three or five minutes, this this waiting time you can set it to three minutes. But I've noticed that it holds the um, amount of minutes that you've set in your system. So and it will start uh, daydreaming. And by that, we're going to the settings, and I'll show you here. There's an option here that says daydream, and the daydream um, pretty much is like the inbuilt screensaver. But if you do not have your Kodi set to system screensaver, it will not start daydream and it will not sleep after uh, in an inactive period. So you really want to set that to system and that should help you that as soon as the video stops playing, um, your screensaver will kick in and it will go on to um, daydream, the automatic uh, screensaver from uh, the the android tv and after that's been on for a while it will actually go to sleep so it will actually go into standby mode and it won't stay on the entire night so that's one of the first things i did um really handy trick there to get your uh, media center from stopping to uh keep the device alive because i'd noticed that if i had kodi open normally um, it would just go dim the screen and it keep it on it just keep it alive forever right so second thing I did was I wanted it so that, and I can't really show you that because I can't record the um, booting mode, but I wanted Kodi to automatically start. Now there's several ways of doing that. You can actually download a Kodi launcher or an SPMC launcher, which will replace this entire menu. Um, it will still be there, but um, it's like downloading a launcher on your phone. It will actually do away with the stock launcher that's on your phone and you will have a different launcher. This launcher opening SPMC or Kodi straight off the boot. There's an easier way of doing things though without that much. Um, if, if you want to keep this uh, and you want to have it readily available, um, there's a different way of doing it. And this is actually the way that um, the guy who's made SPMC is actually describing it on his forum. So you want to get something like a file explorer and you go into it and you want to navigate to your, I think it's this guy. Yeah. You want to navigate to your standard um, SD. This is the zero is the basically the internal storage. So, and you want to go and create, you want to go down to the bottom here, uh, down to the bottom here, if we can. Right, and you want to create a new file and that file you will name now navigating this with the controller is pretty annoying but you can you can uh, plug in a mouse to do it I'm doing it with the controller you want to create this file you want to name this xbmc underscore env dot properties now you want to open that file you'll open it and you want to put in this file xbmc dot auto start equals yes no spaces altogether like that and you want to save the file 
Now, once you've saved that file, this file will make sure that your XBMC or your SPMC starts when your Cody, when your Shield TV starts. So this is automatically booting up Media Center as soon as I turn on the device. Now, it does not automatically turn on the media center if your device comes from a standby mode because it's not the same standby and power off are not the same things so this will only open your media center if you're coming from an off mode however having set up spmc with a system uh, screensaver when it goes into standby mode after you press the button on your controller and you get it out of standby mode it will automatically go back to the app that's that was on the screen. So it will automatically come back to your Kodi, SPMC, what have you. So that's one of the things that I really found handy. Um, it will automatically disable your shield when you're not using it, which saves power and is just better for the world. So, yeah. Right. So the second thing I wanted to do is I wanted retro games. So I downloaded RetroArch. And I'll show you RetroArch. Inside here, I mean, it looks like this. And you're like, oh, how do I start doing things? And it's just uh, meh, meh, meh. So now I'm not going to show you how to set up RetroArch to work with Hyperspin, which we're getting to. Yeah, I mean, I'm just showing you that the interface for this is just, it's kind of meh. So we'll quit out of that, right? What I'd wanted was a nice sort of interface that would really work nice with, uh, has like a nice graphical user interface that would look kind of sweet on um, the Shield TV. So I downloaded Hyperspin and this takes some setting up. Also, once again, I'm not going to show you in this video how to set that up. So now you have Hyperspin loading up. Um, you can actually, I don't know why to do the loading screen because you can just cancel it. It's like a cinematic. So. But yeah, here I have um, some emulators that I've set up with games. Now, this does require you to have a certain amount of room on your shield. If you have a Shield Pro and you have 500 gigs of space on there, you can actually, you just put it on the internal storage. What I've done is I've put it on a um, USB thumb drive and um, plug that into my shield. And this is basically just my emulator drive. Now, it gives you this nice graphic in the over this this nice graphical uh, user interface with videos and what have you so i'll show you the sega a bit for a bit so i've downloaded all this box art and stuff like that and this is pretty much how hyperspin works so the reason i wanted this is because i really wanted to have a nice overlay i wanted to have something nice to look at i want something that is intuitive that if for instance my little nephew comes over and he wants to play games on this thing i can actually just tell him that's where you click, that's where you click. And once I explain it to him once, because it's got the nice graphical user interface, he will then catch on and know how to use this thing because it's simple, it's point and click. And then you, you, you start something, you start a game like this. So the game will start and you can actually play your old school game. And um, I've not set up any buttons. Um, it comes pretty much working out of the box. Uh, Hyperspin piggybacks off RetroArch. So it's basically giving you a graphic interface over RetroArch. And RetroArch is like a sort of um, combined pack of emulators and stuff like that. So I'll show you a quick bit of uh, gaming here. So we can start this. I'm, I'm going to start through all the, uh, inter the, the, the intro stuff. So as you can see, uh, everything works. Now I've swapped the characters. Then I swap the characters again. So yeah, uh, nice bit of retro gaming there. Can we not push this? Ah, uh, oh, the big guy can push it. Right, so push that over. Hey, there we go, we're gaming. There's no sprint. That guy does nothing. Okay, bomb. So we'll swap character. All right. Because hitting fuses with hammers lights them. Right. Anyway, so we can exit exit out of this, and this is where you see the retro arch. You know, what it's what it is piggybacking on. So, but yeah, you can quit retro arch here, and that will quit out of the emulator, and you're back to your graphical user interface. 
So pretty neat, pretty nice looking there. Um, yeah, it just it's it looks great. So yeah, the retro arch, like I said, doesn't look nice. I mean, if I have to explain to my little nephew, I mean, I can load up a, a ROM from here, but if I have to explain that to my nephew, it's just going to be annoying. I mean, it's like uh, yeah, you have to like load. Uh, add content and then go through and by yada yada and finally once you've found an, a game you can actually put it on an emulator and then you can run it so it's it's annoying yeah so we don't want uh, people having to deal with that now and the final bit of thing that i want to show you is the game stream and the game stream like i said i've put it on uh, I've, I've connected it to my pc and once you've done that, um, it will pretty much tell you what to do. I mean, if you go into game stream, it's going to tell you that you want you need to make uh, an NVIDIA account or you can log in with your Google account. If you have a Gmail, you can just log in with that. If you probably own an Android phone or any Android device, you will have a Google account. So you log in with that. You log in on your PC. And once you've done that, um, it's it's pretty much hooked up. As long as you've got GeForce experience running, you can use this. Um, I have to put that out there. I have to say that as well. You do need a GeForce graphics card to be able to stream to this device. So yeah, that's that done. Now, once you've done that, you can actually go to advanced options here and you can go to quality and you can actually set it. How do you want to, um, how do you want your quality to be over Wi-Fi? How do you want it over ethernet? And how do you want it over roaming? Now, I'm hooked up through an Ethernet cable, and I cannot stress this enough, people. If you want to do game streaming in your home, you need a at least a gigabit um, Ethernet setup. You need a gigabit LAN. Um, that means you need to have a router that is capable of routing gigabit speeds. Now, I've got an entire network through my house with switches and whatnot and what have you, and everything is one gigabit. So you need the cables need to be able to do a uh, gigabit so you need like a cat 5e or 6 5e and up cable that can route a gigabit ethernet speed if you go lower than a gigabit 100 megabits is not enough to game stream so just saying so you want to be cabled you want to have a gigabit ethernet speed and then you can set it up basically in 1080p times 60 you can uncheck this unless you have bad network um, things going on and you leave this to automatic the max bit speed and this will it will make it so that your shield can do 1080p 60 fps gaming if your um, host pc so your main pc can actually cope with that because your host PC does need to be able to render 1080p 60fps um, gaming. And if not, your shield experience is going to degrade as well. So you want to have a proper setup to be able to do this. If your setup is less, um, so you, if your PC, for instance, can't handle 1080p um, or it can't handle 60 frames per second, just change the resolution or leave it on automatic if you prefer. But that is how you set that up. Now, optimized games is pretty much the GeForce experience thing, optimizing your game. Now, um, I've noticed um, there's like two camps here because there's one camp that says, oh, I'm never going to use that and it's shit and um, don't use that because it's, it's for noobs and stuff like that. I set this as an easy fire and forget method because optimizing the games on my PC does make it it's not min maxing but it does make it so that the game is running smoothly on my pc to the best um sort of conform to streaming it to the shield box i've noticed this that if i have this off um and i put my own settings on the game sure my pc will be able to handle it but it will only be able to handle it barely it's going to, going to min max the game on uh, that's what you do i like doing that as well you know you're min maxing your game on your pc and it looks the best and you still get that full 60 fps and you want a game like that but you have to keep in mind that your pc is also rendering those frames it's actually sending those frames so it's doing extra tasks now nvidia 
shield game streaming. It's using the sort of shadow play recording thingy to actually take the data straight off the video card. So it's the least impactful of your system, but still it does give a tiny amount of um, power from your PC to render that video and put it on the network and send it out so your shield can decode it. So yeah, that's pretty much how you set up that. And then you can play pretty much any game you want. Um, you can do, uh, well, let's do the Dark Knight here. So these are just like games I've got um, on my uh, Steam or on um, on my PC. And that is pretty much just how that works. Now, it's right. So, uh, yeah, I did have to uh, wait for it to load for a bit. Um, don't really know why. Uh, it might be because I'm running some uh, things in the background. But yeah, as you can see, uh, the game stream works nicely. Um, it is doing 1080p at 60 frames a second. And uh, yeah, we are now uh, cruising along, being able to uh, play our games. And uh, oh, the intros, it's just so long. And I really want to show you guys that the uh, it does work quite nicely. So you can actually do this. Um, with mostly any game, as long as it's got a controller support on it. Um, yeah, because if it doesn't have controller, I think you can plug in a keyboard in and mouse into the shield, and I'm not sure if that actually allows you to play properly. So um, I've not tried it because I don't like um, gaming on a TV with a keyboard and mouse. I mean, if I want to game with a keyboard and mouse, I'll sit at my desk. You know, I, I do play games that which require that. So as you can see, quite smooth there. Uh, looking around, uh, it does look quite good. I'll do a bit of flying here. So yeah. Once in a lifetime opportunity. Turn down a there we go. Do a dive bomb and do some like fast uh, movement. You know. So as you can see, um, it's quite playable. The lag is pretty much non-existent, really. I mean, uh, we'll probably get the same amount of lag um, on uh, playing it on my PC. I mean, there's always some input lag. So, But yeah, quite playable like this. Um, I, I shouldn't even say quite playable. It's just it works. I mean, quite playable sort of insinuates that there is some lag to be dealt with but if there is i can't really sense it i mean my um inputs directly translate into the to the batman so yeah um that's that we're going to start here we'll go exit yep there we go and we'll exit that as well and i thinking it should now yep there it goes it is now put us back into the shield so yeah there you have it um you can actually open steam big picture mode as well and you can do like like i said it's got tons of games on there so um it all works it just it just works so that is pretty much um my basic setup for how you um could have your shield work for you so you got your media center here, you got your hyperspin there, and you got your games and your game streams uh, here. So you can use it all from the main menu. Um, one other thing I would like to show you guys a little bit is um, I installed this sideload launcher because my ISP has an Android app for watching TV on a second screen. What I've done is I've sideloaded the app. Now sideloading means that you get the .apk file for the app um, via means like use a computer search for it online see if you can find it and if you can find it um, you can sideload it by putting it on a usb drive and putting it in your shield and then you can sideload the app and the weird thing is that it would not show up in the main menu for me so what you need to do is um, you need to um, download something that's called sideload launcher and this is an app you can find in the Play Store and it will show up on your home screen. And any app that you download or you sideload into your shield, which does not go on the home screen, you can access through the sideload launcher. Now, what I've done is I've, I've these are all the apps I downloaded. So 
you I've downloaded this app, which is the um, second screen app for my um, ISP, which also provides my TV. And I can open this as well, and I can actually use it to watch TV. Now, you have to be mindful that some of these um, apps that actually, um, they are not meant to be used with a controller. So this app as well, it's got some quirks. My right analog stick has turned into a mouse pointer. Um, my um, D-pad and left analog stick do not work like it doesn't give me a sort of um, block on things to click so this is pretty much you're using it as a scroll and you pretty much scroll down to what you want to watch and whatever and um, yeah then you click the thing oh, let me show you just uh, something we'll do a sort of now the quality on this app is not great um, it is kind of bad because it's meant to be used with smartphones so you you're watching this on a tiny screen or like a tablet or something now for me i'm watching this on a big screen now so the quality is not great but hey um i mean it works i can um, watch my tv um stuff on the shield um and it's not ideal, but for the bedroom, I mean, I barely watch TV anyway. So I, I'm, I'm more of like a binge watching series kind of guy and the watching movies kind of guy. So I hardly ever, ever look at TV. So the quality on TV for me doesn't really matter. I might turn on the TV before I go to sleep or something like that, you know. So, yeah, there's that. So that works as well. Um, so if you have an ISP that has like a second screen app for Android devices, um, try sideloading it. It might actually work for you. Um, now, there's also a way to set it up so that your uh, SPMC can handle all that. Um, as you can see, I've removed my, um, my programs here. But SPMC does give you uh, the option to find it here uh, what to do. on the programs it gives you the option to open android apps so this also works as the side load launcher thingy so you can actually do it from uh, spmc but i did not want to only use spmc because i think this comes from me having to uh, use a Raspberry Pi or lesser systems before because um, uh, you want all your power to actually go into uh, gaming and such like that. So I can actually open the Shield Hub from here and I can actually um, get my games uh, going and such like that. So I can actually like do the PC games from here. But that means that SPMC is still running in the background. And I don't like things running in the background, especially when I'm gaming. So I don't like this. So I've turned that off. I've, I've, well, I've turned it off, but I've hidden it from the main screen. I just want to use my SPMC for videos and a bit of music every now and then. And that's about it. So, but yeah, you can use this. And this also allows me to open up like this, the, the app as well. Uh, it allows me to watch my TV. So I could actually do everything from SPMC if you really wanted to. And having SPMC auto start just, uh, yeah, it just gives you this screen. So you could actually just put SPMC on there and do all the other things. And and that's that. So, right, I'll exit out of that. So, yeah, this is pretty much my setup for uh, how I've set up my shield. Um, basically to function as the device that I've always wanted it to. And it allows me now to uh, use it um, as I want to. Um, so yeah that's uh, that's pretty much it from me um i'll probably upload i'm saying probably because i don't know when and i don't know when i have the time for it i'll probably upload um, a video on how to set up hyperspin with retroarch and i'll probably um uh, yeah I'll, I'll, that's probably all i really need to show you on this um i'll probably um upload a video on how to sideload um, I might not um, actually because there's so many videos out there that show you how to sideload. So, but yeah, um, that's it for me. Um, I hoped you uh, got something out of this. Um, show. I hope I've been able to show you that you can actually set up your 
chilled on how how you really want it. And um, yeah, that's it. Uh, that's it from me. So um, if you uh, found this video helpful, if you liked it in general, um, please uh, give us a like. And um, if you want to see more videos like this or uh, any type of gaming videos, um, you're welcome to subscribe to my channel um, and that will uh, in turn update you whenever I upload a new video. So um, yeah, I hope you have a, uh, a good rest of your day and um, hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye bye.